We're gonna make black bean soup and it's delicious. And nutritious. And hearty. Tasty. And uh, good for you. Super tasty. <laughs> yeah, let's get on with it. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I'm Brian. And I'm Jessica. Today we are making black bean soup because a little while ago when we were going through our old cookbooks, uh, we were reminded that we used to make black bean soup quite often. Yes. And uh, so we decided to kind of reinvent the recipe our way and make it whole food plant-based and make it as healthy as we possibly can. Yeah, this was from one of those cookbooks that we got. I think this one was from Rocco Despirito, and mm -hmm. he has a lot of really good recipes. And we found this one, and we used to make it, I mean, every other week we would make this soup. It was so good. And we were sort of doing weight loss then, but um, just more calorie counting and that kind of stuff. Um, if you remember from our other video where we talked about it, the original recipe used some stuff that definitely isn't compliant with our new lifestyle. So we went through the ingredient list and we made a few swaps. We added a few extra things in that aren't in the original recipe and kind of made it, it ended up actually being a totally different soup, but just using kind of the same outline as the other soup. Yep, but this is the Crocs version of black bean soup. So let's get to cooking. For this recipe, you will need six cans of black beans and the liquid that is inside. We like to use the no salt added kind from Whole Foods. You will also need 16 ounces of salsa. We of course love the Trader Joe's fire roasted tomato salsa because it also has no salt added. You will also need some ketchup. You can use the store bought kind, but we actually ended up just making our spicy ketchup minus any of the spicy stuff and it turned out amazing. And for the final wet ingredient, you will need two cups of veggie broth. As you guys have probably seen in previous videos, we like to use Better Than Bouillon for our veggie stock. So it's basically a concentrate and it can be kind of sticky and hard to use a measuring spoon to measure out two teaspoons exactly. So what I like to do is this little trick, which Brian never lets me show you guys. Like seriously, I've asked him a million times, can we film the veggie broth? measuring trick and he's always like no so i finally got him to let me film it this time and basically what i do is i take my scale and then i put the measuring cup on top then i put the spoon that i'm going to use to measure it into the measuring cup and clear out the scale to zero so then you can basically dip your spoon into the better than bouillon and measure out the correct amount i need two teaspoons or 12 grams in this case because i'm making two cups of veggie stock and then you put it back in and whatever the weight on the scale shows is just the better than bouillon at that point. You can see I hit 13, which wasn't exact, but I was happy with that, so I went on. Also, we get a lot of questions about the better than bouillon and it does have sodium, yes. We do use the low sodium organic version. The organic version does not have any oil, which is nice, but the sodium we don't really worry about because we're not adding like any other salt and all the stuff we're using in this soup is no salt added. So we're not really concerned about adding a little bit of sodium from the veggie stock. But also then you just pour in two cups of hot water and mix it all together and it will dissolve and everything. And as you can see, it's all clean and nice and you don't have to worry about any kind of measuring spoons or anything like that. So yeah, that's basically just my little tip. Hope you enjoyed it. And for the spices, you will need some chili powder, smoked paprika, garlic powder, ground cumin, and some cocoa powder. Now, you may be asking yourself, Brian, why cocoa powder? Just trust me, this will work out in the end. In a large pot, add two cans of the beans and their liquid, as well as all of the liquid of the rest of the beans and then just go ahead and set the other beans aside for now. After that, add in your two cups of veggie broth and then you will need to blitz it. Also, uh, this is a good time to actually turn your stove on and get this heating just so you can have everything uh, cooking as well. But we use our immersion blender to blitz everything in the pot. If you do not have an immersion blender, you can just throw this into any blender that you have and it will work just fine. But you are looking for a nice thin consistency here. Then go ahead and add in all the rest of the black beans and the entire jar of salsa. 
Keep in mind, if you use spicy salsa, this will turn out really spicy. If you use a sweet salsa, this will turn out sweet. Then we will go ahead and add in our ketchup. Once again, this is actually the ketchup that we made just without any, uh, any of the spice added in there. So it is just straightforward homemade ketchup from our kitchen. Also, Jessica decided to put the ketchup into the most difficult container to get it out of. So just bear with us here. Now we can add in our dry ingredients with a quarter cup of chili powder, two teaspoons of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of cumin, and finally add in four teaspoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. Yes, cocoa powder. It's gonna smell like chocolate for a little bit, but trust me, that will go away and you will just have this nice, delicious black bean soup. You can also add in a quarter teaspoon of salt, but that is entirely optional. After that, you just bring it to a simmer, stirring often. You wanna make sure that the beans don't stick to the bottom and uh, just let it simmer for around 10 to 15 minutes. Of course, this is like a good chili. The longer you let it sit, the more the flavor will develop. But as you can see, it turns out nice and thick and just absolutely delicious. So there you have it. It uh, is actually really easy to throw together. It's uh, just simple as all get out. And uh, I think it turns out amazing. I remember when we were testing out the recipe and trying to find out what we needed to add to it. Uh, and I was like, you know what I kind of want to add? I want to add some cocoa powder. I don't know why I want to add some cocoa powder, but I wanted to add some cocoa powder. And then I threw it in there and then I was just like, Oh yeah. It really does work. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna be scared about the cocoa powder. So if you want, you could start with like half the amount, just see how you like it. But I actually think when he added this amount of cocoa powder, you, you don't taste cocoa powder, but it just adds like a richness to it. You'll smell it when it first goes in and it mm -hmm. starts sort of, uh, you know, cooking in the, in the pot. But once that is like, once it's fully incorporated, you don't smell it and you just have like these sort of nice undertones of this earthy richness from the cocoa powder. Yeah, it turned out really good. I actually, I really miss this soup because we, like we said, we used to make it a long time ago. And when I, the first day we had it for lunch, I was like, yes, this is, this is what I've been missing. Yep, so you want to try it? Um, sure. Let's go for it. Mm-hmm. It actually thickens up quite a bit too. So if you saw the footage that we took, that was like right after it came out. It does thicken up quite a bit mm. when you refrigerate it. And I think it tastes better the next day. It definitely tastes better the next day. Yeah. Mm. Yep. It's got a little bit of spice to it from the salsa because we didn't put add anything into it that, uh, that was spicy in particular except for the salsa. So keep that in mind whenever you're actually using whatever salsa you're going to use yeah the if you use a spicy salsa because our our salsa that we use the trader joe's one is quite spicy and so that's enough spice but it doesn't really overwhelm it with spice mm -mm, does not but if you uh if you do like a sweet salsa obviously it's going to come out with a sweeter flavor than what we have yeah but you know we we decided to just go with something that was straightforward with the fire roasted tomato which is always going to be nice the hardest part was actually mm. trying to figure out the balance that would make the consistency right, like the right mm -hmm. thickness and all that stuff. Yeah, the first time we made it, it was way too runny. But I'm also going to let you in on a little backstory <laughs> as to why we didn't eat this soup very often for a good long oh, while. Oh, I forgot about that. And it's because I... The Spice Master. The Spice Master, apparently, as some have dubbed me, uh botched the recipe. I was experimenting with it and I took it a little too far. Yeah, this was like probably five or six years ago and I still just like, I didn't want the black bean soup for a long time. Yeah, and uh, if you're wondering, the, the thing that I added that just completely botched it was I ended up adding caraway seeds and it just, it no, it, didn't it, work. it did not work at all. And that, that one pot of chili or uh, of black bean soup <laughs> is uh is what put jessica off for a long long time so i'm happy that i can say that i have come back and i have redeemed myself with this delicious masterpiece of black bean soup it's funny because anytime that brian um goes to experiment with spices i always 
am like, oh, you're not going to do that thing you did to the black bean soup that one time. So uh, luckily, I, he has redeemed himself and proven himself to actually be really good with, with different spice blends. Um, so he does get to experiment a lot. But yeah, he definitely went, sometimes it doesn't work out. <laughs> Yep, but sometimes it turns out amazing. Yeah, but this Just is like really this. good. This is this this did turn out really good. And um, you actually, Brian made some. What do you call it? I guess vegan sour cream. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just made with silken tofu. Yep. And lemon juice. And some red wine vinegar. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I found a couple different recipes, and then I sort of threw together my own. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on that, let us know in the comments and uh, it'll be a real quick one. It won't be super <laughs> long or anything. It's not... The, I, I actually never liked sour cream to begin with except for mixed into something like this because that's what we used to... We used to use like what? Was it like low-fat sour cream or fat-free sour yeah, yeah, cream? Yeah. And like mix it into our black bean soup just to give it a little bit more creaminess and like just that like it just added. Also, I like putting something cold into my hot soup and just stirring it in just yep. before I eat it because it, then you get that perfect temperature. And so when we made this, I was like, oh, I wonder if there's anything we could do with sour cream. And he um, came home one night with some silken tofu and started experimenting. But... I, when I eat it by itself, I didn't think the sour cream was that good, but when you mix a little in with the soup, it does add a nice little balance to it. Yeah. I don't mind the, uh, the, the, the tofu sour cream, but it, yeah. it does the job when you're adding it onto stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Jessica, mm -hmm. if, uh, if these fine folks would like to find out more about us, where can they do so? Well, they can check out our website, which is crocsinthekitchen.com. Or they can check us out on social media. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, a bunch of other places. So if you look in the description box below, there's links to all those. And make sure you're following us there because we are going to be doing quite a few, I think, like polls and stuff like that coming up. Just trying to get a sense of what kind of content you guys want from our channel. So, um, you know, we like, we love to be interactive with you guys there. So give us a follow. <laughs> yep, yep. Also, uh, was that a good sales pitch? That was a good sales pitch. <laughs> also, we are still trying to get some details hammered down for our trip to uh, to London and the surrounding area. And so if you happen to be in the London area and are a fan of ours, please let us know if you would like to do a meetup because we just want to see if you know, how many people would actually be interested in going. So just comment or something uh, down below or go to one of our social media sites, send us a message and say, hey, I'm in the London area and I would love to meet up. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we can sort of get get a, a distinct number down for, uh, for the possible event coming up. Uh, also, if you have not subscribed, please do so. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it and click the bell that is right next to it, so you get all the notifications whenever we post a new video. I think that's all I got. That's all I got. We will see you <laughs> next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye.